Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You have a second round matchup in the National Basketball Association playoffs between the Portland Trailblazers, who just dispatched the Houston Rockets, and the team with the number one seed in the Western Conference, the San Antonio Spurs. Now, right now, depending on which book you look at, right, you can get a minus 400 on the series prop for the Spurs. Now, even though at first glance, in terms of, you know, uh, recent momentum, and in terms of season series, which was split two to two between these two teams, while at first glance, these teams look evenly matched. I believe the wise play here are the San Antonio Spurs to win this series. Let's get under the hood. Let's talk about why. First, you know, the Spurs have home court advantage. In the playoffs, that matters greatly. You just saw Indiana win a Game 7 on their home court. You just saw the Spurs win a Game 7 on their home court. You just saw the Clippers win a Game 7 on their home court. The only team that lost a Game 7 on their home court were the Toronto Raptors, and that margin was razor close. If Kyle Lowry hits that last shot, you have a different winner in that series. The home court matters. Also, the coaching gap matters. You know, Terry Stotts is an excellent coach. He's not Greg Popovich. Right? Popovich is one of the elite coaches in the game. Right? Coaching matters, in my opinion, a great deal in tight playoff situations. Right? You need a coach who can keep control of the team, and make great decisions down the stretch. Popovich, with four rings, is proven. Terry Stotts is not. You also have an experience gap here. Right? If I'm correct, and double-check me, LaMarcus Allrich has never made it to the second round of the NBA playoffs. Right? It's been several years since the Portland Trailblazers have made it to the second round of the NBA playoffs. By contrast, the Spurs are the reigning Western Conference champions. Right? Guys like Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, they've been living in the later rounds of the playoffs. Right? I believe at this level, playoff experience matters. Right? The Portland Trailblazers simply don't have the experience of winning in the later rounds of the playoffs that the San Antonio Spurs do. Also, the Spurs have a better defense than the Portland Trailblazers. In the month of March, the Spur defense held opponents to 94 point five points a game. Now March is important because that's really the last month the regular season really mattered for some of these teams. Right? In April a team like the Spurs who had already locked up the one seed in the West didn't go all out after winning that one seed. Look at their starting lineups for some of their late games. Right? So when you look at April, you're looking at some teams that are resting themselves. You're looking at other teams. No one wants to talk about it. But you're looking at other teams that are trying to slot themselves up or down for certain first-round playoff matchups. Right? I personally consider it curious how the Brooklyn Nets ended up with the sixth seed. But it happened. Right? So I like to look at March. In judging where a team is late in the season, not April. And in March, the San Antonio Spurs held opponents to 94.5 points per game. That's phenomenal. By contrast, the Portland Trailblazers gave up 101 points a game. 
in the month of March. By the way, you might want to know that the Portland Trailblazers had a losing record, 8-9 in March. That takes me to my next point. Who's the hotter team? Right, who did better in the second half of the year? The San Antonio Spurs, after the All-Star break, were 24-5. and Understand, these playoffs are being played in 2014. I'm not going to focus too much on 2013 stats. Right, I know the Blazers did well in November and December. Right, this is now May of 2015. After the All-Star break, the Spurs go 24-5. and five. After the All-Star break, the Portland Trailblazers went 18-11. and 11. I prefer the 24-5, and five, especially when the 24-5 and five team has the home court advantage. Let me point out, too, in April, for those of you interested in April numbers, it's true. The Trailblazers went 6-1. and one. They also gave up 104.9 points per game. Right, their defense is simply not the San Antonio Spur defense. I have news for you. We're at the time of year, the playoffs, where defenses matter. Let's go one step further. For hardcore gamblers, I believe this is really the eye opener that separates these two teams. San Antonio has the much deeper bench. I mean, much deeper bench. Understand, too, that the Portland Trailblazer starters have played an inordinate amount of minutes, right? They simply don't have a deep rotation. Now, adrenaline will get you through the first round of the playoffs, especially when you haven't won a playoff series in several years. You could imagine those guys targeted the first round of the playoffs. Right? The problem is playing playoff teams every night is going to wear you down faster than playing some playoff teams and then playing some teams that aren't playoff teams, which you do during the regular season. Right? So we're at the point of the season where every game you play is against a playoff team. I'm a guy who believes that if your team is thin, and these starters, and they can be in their 20s, are logging a lot of minutes. Sooner or later, the deeper team is going to win out. Even if your starter is better than the opposing player, if your starter is tired and the opposing player is fresh, why? Because the opposing player hasn't been playing the same number of minutes. Right? The opposing player has been playing three quarters to your starters four quarters. Sooner or later, fatigue is going to set in. Now, let's go through just some of the minutes here. Right, The starting point guard for the San Antonio Spurs is Tony Parker. Would it surprise you to know that Tony Parker during the season played something like 900 fewer minutes than Damon, Damian Lillard? The starting point guard for the Portland Trailblazers. Right? Understand that Lillard played 2,937 minutes. By contrast, Tony Parker played 1,997 minutes. Who's going to be fresher in these playoffs? Let's get to the shooting guard. Wesley Matthews of the Trailblazers has played 2,780 minutes. By contrast, Danny Green has played 1,651 minutes. Put another way, Wesley Matthews has played 2,300 more minutes than backup C.J. McCullough, who's played the second highest number of minutes from the shooting guard position for the Trailblazers. By contrast, with the Spurs, the minutes are so evenly distributed that Manu Ginobili, who didn't have the most minutes at shooting guard for the Spurs, played in almost the same number of minutes as Danny Green. There's only a 100 gap between them. Right? Manu played in 1,550 minutes. 
It's like this across the board, right? Nicholas Batum, 2,956 minutes, a small forward for the Blazers. By contrast, you have two guys over 1,900 minutes for the San Antonio Spurs. So with the Spurs, not only are the guys better rested, and I mean across the board, even Robin Lopez has played significantly more minutes than Tim Duncan, right? Not only are the Spurs better rested, but an, but an opposing coach has to worry about more variables. They're more moving parts, right? If I'm playing the Blazers, I have to worry about Damian Lillard at point guard, right? So I can prepare the team to deal with Damian Lillard's tendencies at point guard, who he passes to, where he wants to be to take the shot, right? My defense has to be ready for that. But that's about it, right? With the Spurs, by contrast, I have to worry about Tony Parker at point guard. I have to worry about Patrick Mills at point guard. Right? With the Blazers, I have to worry about Wesley Matthews at shooting guard. With the Spurs, I have to worry about Danny Green. I have to worry about Manu Ginobili. Even Corey Joseph had more than 900 minutes played. I believe at some point, fatigue is going to set in for the Blazers. These Blazers starters, and they probably have a better starting lineup than the Spurs, but that's not where this game's going to be decided. These Blazers starters played an inordinate number of minutes, not only during the regular season, but during their first round series against the Houston Rockets. Right? Even though they closed out that series in six games, as opposed to the seven that the Spurs needed to beat Dallas, the Spurs are probably the more rested team. Right? I think the Spurs' depth it's going to be a big deciding factor in this series. I like the San Antonio Spurs to take this series. Let me go one step further. If you chart it out, the Spurs are going to be hard to beat, period. Right? This is a deep, dangerous, experienced team that knows that they blew last year's NBA title with a curious series of events at the end of Game 6. They have themselves to blame. Well, they're back, they're rested, they're loaded, they're deep. I think they take this series. I like the Spurs on the series prop over the Portland Trailblazers. Now keep in mind, this is a series prop, not a game-by-game -game prop. I believe the Spurs win the series. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisoryandwirevip.com. Thanks for stopping by.